We as Muslims look into everything around us from an Islamic uh, perspective. Yani, what is happening with any epidemic or pandemic diseases uh, which takes the lives of thousands, maybe tens and maybe hundreds of thousands of people? We need to look into the causes. Um, and whether the cause is something natural or the cause of a biological war, because a lot of people are suggesting that uh, it could be the United States trying to break China and affect their economy by spreading, you know, uh, uh, this viral infection there or here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. This is not the, uh, the, the, the concern because we cannot stop it. The concern for us as Muslims, I'm not speaking here from a medical perspective or a preventive medicine perspective or as a doctor I'm speaking about uh, our sense as Muslims towards what is happening because now the viral infection and the outbreak is going through all over the world uh, Italy has a huge quarantine uh, place it's like a concentration camp uh, many Muslim countries um, you know, recently, a couple of days ago, uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia announced the suspension of Umrah. And you never know, hopefully not Hajj as well. But this is a very high season of performing Umrah. Uh, hundreds of thousands of Muslims from all over the world have booked uh, their Umrah trip uh, in advance. And now no flights would land to uh, Jeddah or Medina for Umrah basically not even for tourism and uh, whatever they did was perfectly in line with the sharia uh, as the prophet sallallahu was the first to advise about the preventive uh, medicine uh, so this is for the welfare of everyone and uh, again i'm not here to applaud or condemn the decision i'm just saying i'm, I'm concerned about you brothers and sisters those who are going for umrah those who have been saving and they booked their vacation and they booked their Umrah trip, they bought their Ihram and they were very excited. Then they are heading to the airport either today or yesterday or whenever and they were told, sorry, no more Umrah for the time being has been suspended. So what to do? I mean, you would feel bad, no doubt. And I would feel very bad for everyone who's going for Umrah. Uh, yeah, for everyone who's going for Umrah and their Umrah was cancelled. But the good news is, the good news is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the sound hadith, Man hamma bi hasanatin falam ya'malha kutibat lahu hasanatun kamila. Whoever intends and is about to do a good deed, then he or she will not able to do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them the full reward of what they intended to do for simply mere good intention. So this is actually something uh, great, amazing. In the dunya, if you don't show about work for a reason or another, uh, you're absent. And in, in the school, if you're taking your final, then you got in a car accident or you're not able to join the exam, you fail. They don't say, well, he has an excuse. You just need to take the exam some other time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَلَّيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى وَأَنَّ سَعْيَهُ سَوْفَ يُرَى ثُمَّ يُجْزَاهُ الْجَزَاءَ الْأَوْفَى يعني Allah will reward you and will recompense you according to your pursuit. And whether you achieve the deed itself or not, for mere pursuing it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for it. So, while I feel sorry for those who are going for Umrah and they will not be able to, Alhamdulillah, I want to share the good news, the great news with them. This is what they call it, al ghanimatul barida Yani, spoils without fighting. Getting a reward without doing much. So you're at home, Perhaps you're going to enjoy this vacation with your family members, 
do something else, hopefully good. But alhamdulillah, the reward for your Umrah is maintained and guaranteed. You kept the money in your pocket and you got a full reward for performing Umrah. Secondly, with regards to the uh, causes and besides the worldly causes of the spread of the pandemic uh, infection uh, or the coronavirus or any other thing, what could it be? We as Muslims have to check out our deeds and our behavior to find out maybe it's a means of punishment for the whole world. Yeah, why not? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, once made a statement before his wife Juwairiya bint al-Harith and he said وَيْلُ لِلْعَرَبِ مِنْ شَرٍ قَدْ اِقْتَرَبُ Woe to the Arab from an evil which is approaching them. So she said, Ya Rasulullah, أَوَ نَهْلِكُ وَفِينَ الصَّالِحُونَ Is it possible that we may uh, be punished and destroyed the collateral punishment while we have righteous people among us? He said, yes, إِذَا كَثُرَ الْخَبَثِ Certainly, indeed, when evil becomes widespread, when evil becomes widespread. <laughs> I want to ask you a question. Do you guys have any doubt that evil and immorality has become not just widespread, it has become the norms nowadays in most of the countries of the world? Do you have any doubt in that regard? Hmm? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most patient one. If he were going to account us or punish people immediately for their sins, you would not find a single human being living on earth because all of us deserve the punishment, but Allah is most merciful. Allah is most merciful. And he's given us respite. Hopefully we'll repent. And he's given us chances after chances. So what kind of immorality, what kind of uh, causes could be triggering this punishment if it is a means of punishment uh, you know subhanallah the widespread of zulm and oppression worldwide widespread of oppression and zulm is something really terrible which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not approve and he said ya ibadi inni harramtu zulma ala nafsi wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharraman fala tadhalamu O my servants, I have forbidden uh, injustice to myself and I've made it forbidden among you. So you should not treat each other unjustly. You should not oppress each other. But what is happening, what is happening is that we really oppress each other. The powerful nowadays, they suppress and they oppress the weak, whether individuals, groups, or countries. Uh, immorality, as I said uh, previously, just a couple of days ago as I was watching the news, and I was shocked to know that uh, the Pope, the Catholic Pope, uh, announced that uh, <laughs> homosexuality is not a sin anymore. And, and believe it or not, for the first time, a high-ranking um, religious authority have used the word the term gay they said being gay is not a sin anymore so what is the point then of God and divine revelation and the church or the guidance I uh, don't you know about the story of Prophet Lut السلام, I want to tell you by the way uh, not only, not only the Christian Pope, not only the Pope who have said so, among Muslims, now it is coming that you see some Muslim preachers, okay, I don't call them scholars, who are actually announcing that too. It is the personal choice. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say that. And you guys can never change the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I have been approached by some people representing different countries from Europe. And they spent a long time with me. 
uh, trying to convince me to make a statement that uh, you can be a good Muslim while being gay. I said, no one, not including myself or anyone, the top official in the Muslim Ummah can never make such statement because we have something called Quran. We have the statements of the Prophet وسلم, we refer to. So whoever would dare to say so, he fails, but the deen will not fail. And that's not going to change the fact. So yes, we have seen uh, same-sex marriage in the churches uh, all over the world. And uh, yesterday, two priests, two male priests got married in a church. Well, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ دين. That is your religion. But why do you blame God for what is happening? While it is the outcome of our own doing. Hmm? Don't you read the story of Prophet Lut السلام, in the Quran? Don't you know what happened to his people due to uh, their immorality? You know, this is very important. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to what is best. And never, ever listen to any Muslim preacher who try to change the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a visa or residency or a promotion or a gift. This person, whoever dares to change the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, erase him from the list of your speakers. Do not even give him an ear anymore. Do not listen to him. It's very simple. It is very simple. Uh, we as Muslims follow the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not the shiukh, not the scholars. No matter who is this person. The shaykh or the scholar is only transmitting the word of Allah and conveying the message of Rasulullah sallallahu to the layman. But when he is not trustworthy anymore, when he is trying to twist the fact or the truth, with regards to immorality, with regards to just find the injustice which is done even by the rulers or the governments to, um, to the citizens, this guy is out of the list. I won't call him a shaykh anymore. I hope this message is clear. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, إِذَا كَثُرَ الْخَبَثِ But Shaykh, there are uh, innocent people and there are uh, Shannaz is saying no voice. وَعَلَيْكُمْ السَّلَامُ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ Is there any interruption with the voice or the, uh, and the video? Can you please confirm? Allah Musta'an. Okay. Maybe at your end, uh, Shahnaz. Uh, okay, let me continue. Alhamdulillah, uh, shukrullah. So, salvation salvation and to be safe and sound to be secure is only in following what Allah have said and what his Prophet وسلم, have instructed us to do he said Azza wa Jalla in Surah Taha فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا يَضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتِي فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى So Allah the Almighty give us the road map. And by the way, when Allah gives us a road map, there is no other road map. There is no salvation. There is no welfare in any other road map. It's only one. It's only Surat al-Mustaqim. 
Whoever would follow the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to his prophets will never go astray and will never suffer in this dunya of any uh, stress whatsoever. The deen does not only promise paradise in the hereafter for the good doers, but it also promises a goodly life in this life for the good doers. May Allah make us among them. But those will turn their backs to the guidance of God, reject it and say, we are God. We decide what to do. And they change the word of God. The word dunk means miserable. So their life in this dunya will be miserable. You may think that they are enjoying their lives, driving luxurious cars. And um, having credit cards, they go to the mall and they do the shopping that they want. But they take their lives. And many, why do they take their lives? Because they are not happy. They are depressed with all the luxury that they are having. Yes, sir. What could be the cause? Only one cause. Only one cause. Not recognizing Allah and rejecting His roadmap. So it's your call, brothers and sisters. Yani with regards to the plague or the pandemic or the epidemic diseases or the outbreak of the coronavirus. The Prophet ﷺ said such diseases or the plague back then was a means of punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will erase a whole nation or a whole community of the face of the earth with the with this uh, epidemic disease. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it a means of mercy for the believers. How? How could it be a means of mercy? He said, whoever is afflicted, like living in a society which is afflicted with any of these pandemic diseases, then he endures it patiently. If he dies, he dies as a shaheed. If she dies, she dies as a shaheed. Alhamdulillah wa shukrillah. Anyway, anyway, um, you know, my mother yesterday was asking me not to travel to attend conferences anymore nowadays. I said, but you know, mom, if I'm supposed to die uh, at any time, I will definitely die at that time. You know, I would not be postponed, nor would I die earlier. Subhanallah. Uh, I know how much she is worried, but alhamdulillah, if you're going for a good cause, and especially if you know that this place that you're going to, it is not announced as uh, you know an afflicted country with the uh, with the virus. Yes, the virus now has become you can say worldwide in Europe, in the States, there are a few cases here and there in the Middle East. Uh, you've seen uh, in in Egypt, in uh, Kuwait, in Iran, it's terrible. It's terrible. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala protect us all. So, whoever is afflicted with this disease if he or she were to die they die as a shaheed alhamdulillah wa shukrillah so the next life will be the best and anyway we're gonna die sooner or later but if you die as the prophet sallallahu said in the sound hadith well mat'unu shaheed those who die due to plague or any of those pandemic diseases are martyrs from among those who testify to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, at Tasbih, the scholars said, the scholars said that at Tasbih saying subhanallah has a great effect in protecting the person against uh, such calamity. So increase making Tasbih, and you say subhanallah or subhanallah or bihamdi, subhanallah al azim And as you all know that uh, these are among the most favorite and loved words of praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, uh, they are easy to repeat, but they're very heavy. They're light on the tongue, but they're very heavy in the scale of the good deeds. And they're very dear to the most beneficent. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al -Azim. Teach your children that Allah alone is the only curer. Allah alone is the only curer. Even when the doctor prescribes a medication for you, before you administer the medicine, before you put it in your mouth, say, Bismillah shafi in the name of Allah who cures. 
and instruct and inspire the children and those who are under your guardianship it is not the tablet it is not the capsule it is not the injection which is the cure it is a mean and it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who cures Ibrahim alayhi salam said in surah al-shu'ara وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ and whenever I fall ill he is the only one who gives me shifa and of course I see this opportunity to make dua for all of those who are sick may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you a full and a speedy recovery Ameen done uh, and don't forget the dua Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-barasi wal-jununi wal-judami wa sayyi al-asqami this hadith is very important this dua say it every day nowadays in order to protect yourselves and your family members against the outbreak of the coronavirus the dua again Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-barasi wal-jununi wal-judami wa sayyi al-asqami O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you against what? Al-Baras, vitiligo. Al-Junoon, insanity. Alzheimer, forgetting even your name. Uh, Al-Judam, leprosy, which is a contagious disease. Okay? Wasayi al-Asqami, and all the evil sicknesses and diseases. Viral infection, microbial infection, whatever. Okay? One more time, I know. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-barasi wal-jununi wal-judami wa sayyi al-asqami. 